What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And as a lot of you guys probably heard, uh, there was an individual whose life was taken from them in Salinas Valley a couple days ago, December 14th. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that, but I'm going to talk about who this individual was, why, in fact, they got whacked, and the bigger picture of what this says about some of the shady tactics that CDC has been using, which I was unaware of, honestly, and I haven't heard anybody else talk about. Uh, before this incident. So I'm going to read a little bit from the press release. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can Google it and find it, CDCR press release. Uh, but but just to give you the names and, and kind of where these people come from, right? And then we'll break down what's behind all of this. So at 8.40 in the morning on December 14th, uh, on the rec yard, this was on sea lower, uh, Horacio Ramirez uh, lost his life, allegedly at the hands of David Pacheco and Adrian Lopez. So Ramirez was uh, 30 years old and was received from Tulare County in 2014. He had a life sentence with the possibility of parole for first degree murder, second degree robbery, criminal gang activity. Uh, while he was incarcerated, in fact, just recently in May of 2023, uh, he was sentenced to nine additional years in Los Angeles County. So I'm guessing he was at Lancaster when he caught that case, right? Uh, that's the prison in Los Angeles County. And, and again, that was recent. He was sentenced recently. That doesn't mean that the incident happened in 2023. It probably happened a couple years prior because it takes a while to go through the, the process. But uh, Lopez, right, one of his alleged attackers was 33, received from Santa Clara County in, in 2021. The press release says that he got three years. I think that's a typo. He probably got 13 years uh, for second degree attempted murder, second degree attempted robbery. Discharge of a firearm and inhabited dwelling, uh, gang activity and, and attempted carjacking. And then Pacheco, 39, was received from L.A. County in June of 2006. Uh, he had life with the possibility of parole for first degree murder, first degree attempted murder, possession of a firearm by an ex-felon. And then he was sentenced in Imperial County uh, in 2012 to serve another year and four months for an assault. I'm guessing he was at, uh, what was that, Sentinella over there in Imperial County, I think. And then a couple years later, he was sentenced again in Imperial County to serve another two years for uh, assault with a weapon likely to cause great bodily injury. So uh, then again, in Imperial County, man, so he got three cases in Imperial County. He got two years for possession of a weapon. Uh, so that dude caught all kinds of time over there. Again, I think that's Sentinella that's in Imperial County. So what happened here, right? This dude, uh, his name was Ramirez. So he was in a wheelchair. Um, the guy was in a wheelchair, he couldn't walk, right? And he had just come to see lower, uh, which again is, is a GP, you know, uh, non-integrated, non-SNY, non, none of that stuff, just standard old GP, quote unquote, active yard. And he came there from the medical facility in Stockton. Right. So uh, Stockton, the old YA out there, uh, Carl Holden, has been turned into a medical facility. And for those that really play the politics in prison, right, the GP politics, the active politics, especially for Raza, so Northerners and Southerners, if you do time at that Stockton facility, um, that's that's a no good place to be. Right. It, it, they have severe EOP cases. They have all kinds of individuals there because it's a medical facility, you know, um, and so apparently if you stay there, then you're deemed. And is that the reason that this individual was hit, right? Uh, that's definitely a factor. You know, I, I can't say for certain that that's 100% of the reason, but it's definitely a factor. So you have a dude who's in a wheelchair, which probably contributed to why he had to go to the medical facility, right? Um, who then comes out to yard. He had a duck it, I think, and came out to yard and... Uh, and fell for the okie doke man and, and lost his life. And I want to say, first of all, just from the perspective of somebody that's done time, from the perspective of somebody that's done hits in prison, um, I would hate to be the dude whose number's called to go move on somebody who's in a wheelchair. Like, he got hit, he fell out the wheelchair, he couldn't get up. You know, it, he was doomed from the start. It was game over from the start. I'm not sure why they sent two people on him, right? It, Looks like his upper body in, in the picture, he's the one with the tattoos on his neck. So he looked like a pretty healthy dude in terms of his upper body. 
but he can't get up. So you knock him out the chair, it's game over. I, I don't know why you need two people. Uh, probably one would have sufficed, but also that's, not that you should brag about hurting people anyways, but in a gang sense, right? Like calling a spade a spade. Um, you don't get no points for, for whacking somebody that, that can't even walk, homes. You know, now granted, if, if your number's called, your number's called. If it's your time to go, it's your time to go. So I don't know if these dudes had messed up before. Um, if this was kind of like a cleanup or a punishment, or if it was just circumstantial, right? They happened to be right there and the guy came on the wheelchair and somebody said go and they went. You know, but but that's messed up. And and one of those guys, uh, the one from Santa Clara County, he's not a lifer. You know, he as of right now, you know, he still has a date that's like 10 years down the road. Um, now he's potentially looking at a life sentence. Right. Uh, probably won't get a whole life sentence, but he's he's looking at significantly more time for for a homicide of a dude in a wheelchair. But the other question is. Why was this guy on this yard, right? And he's not the only one. They, uh, they've taken multiple people who have been S and Y in the past and put them in Salinas Valley on these yards where S and Y cats can't walk, just to be quite honest, right? They've put bulldogs over there. Now, Salinas Valley has a yard with bulldogs, right? Uh, C Upper has bulldogs, but it's a GP yard. It's not an S and Y yard. You still get moved off that yard uh, if if you've got bad paperwork or if you've been to an S&Y yard. So they're putting bulldogs on the yard that can't program there. Um, they put a couple of black dudes on the yard that were S&Y before that can't be there. Uh, one of them had to get packed out several times before CDC would finally get them off the yard, you know, and props to him for coming outside. But um but it, they're putting them in situations where they're in danger. And these dudes are making it clear. They got two fibers on the yard. Not programming. Not going outside. But they got two fibers on the yard that obviously can't program. You know, and, and they're not coming out of their cell. For the most part, these guys are not coming out of their cell. This dude did. Ramirez, unfortunately, did. Um, again, was, was there a ducat put in on his behalf, which is a move that people make sometimes to, to kind of get you out? And, and he fell for it, or did he just think everything was all good, right? And, and he kind of got rocked to sleep and felt like, look at the work that I've put in for the homies. You know, I just, I just caught nine years, you know, earlier this year. Like, maybe I get a pass going to the medical facility. I don't know. We'll never know because he's deceased. But why is CDC putting dudes on these yards when... Their life is in danger. And again, these individuals are making it clear, bro, I can't be here. Like they're calling lieutenants to the door. They're, they're, they're being very vocal. You know, everybody in, in that section knows that those guys know that they can't be there. They're not coming out to any movements. You know, they're not going to chow. They're not going to yard. Um, in, in some instances, you have people standing in front of their doors trying to get their doors popped, right? Because, because they're a target, because they can't be there. And CDC's not moving them. Now, since this individual's uh, life was taken, that's changing. Now they're, they've gone in, they've snatched up some of these guys, and they put them in ad seg, right? So maybe this will stop, but but it shouldn't have happened to begin with. And and there's different rumors as to why it happened, kind of depending on who you talk to, right? Uh, administration is saying, hey, well, you know, these dudes were S and Y before. But some of them have caught new cases, so they've come back to prison. And in coming back to prison, they haven't explicitly stated that they need protection. But that doesn't really make sense because they're explicitly stating it now from the building. So, so I don't feel like that excuse works. Uh, and, and it's not on the COs at Salinas Valley, right? They don't decide who comes there and, and who doesn't. Um, they, they take who the administration sends. And they know that these dudes can't be here and they don't want those dudes there, but they're not allowed. They, they haven't been allowed to pull them off the yard. And it's unfortunate that, it's unfortunate this individual lost their life, right? Prison's a dangerous place. Um, you can lose your life for any reason or for no reason. That's just how it goes. Whether you're active or GP or integrated or S&Y or, you know, EOP or 
wherever you're at, right, you can get God. And and it's unfortunate when it happens, but it's a violent place, and, and that violent place has rules, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I think it's ridiculous that somebody goes to a medical facility, and the guy's in a wheelchair, so it kind of makes sense that he probably needed some level of medical care, right? And just because he goes there, no matter what he's done for the fellas in the past, just the fact that he stayed on that yard, uh, you know, ends his career. And again, there might be more to that story, but that is a element. I don't know that it's 100% of it, but that is an element. It, just the fact that he came from there. Uh, so the politics are so cutthroat, man, that, that it, it don't matter how solid you're standing. Uh, people can politic against you just because you go to where CDC says you need to go to get the medical care that you need. And CDC knows that. They played that game with me when when it came out that, that I had cancer and I needed surgery. And they initially tried to send me to Mill Creek, right? And, and I've talked about that before. Maybe I'll do another video about it, uh, you know, another day. But it's unfortunate this individual lost her life. It's unfortunate that that these folks were tapped to go do that. Right? And it's not as if they had a choice. That's not how that environment works. They tell you to go, you go. If you don't go, then somebody's going for you. And it's not like you're saving the individual that you were sent on. They're still going to get what they got coming. But now you're going to get the same thing. So I don't fault them for doing it, really. Uh, that's, that's how it goes. If you're going to be in a mix, that's how it goes. But again, man, it, one of those guys was, was doing life in at Cot all kinds of more time. But the other one, you know, he had a date and his date wasn't too far around the corner and, and that's going to change now. Um, again, again, for a dude in a wheelchair, like that's just, I would, again, I would hate to be that guy, you know, um, and, and I don't know why they sent two, you know, I really don't feel like that was necessary, but, uh, but, but I don't want to make light of this individual's death either, but CDC could have prevented this. Right. They could have prevented this by housing people. You have so many different yards now. You have active yards. You have straight S and Y PC yards. You have integrated yards where people can program together. Like there's so many options for where to house people. It makes no sense to me that they're taking a, a handful of individuals and putting them on yards that they know they can't be on. And then these individuals are screaming, we can't be here. And they're still leaving them there, right? As, as just prey, you know? And it, you can't necessarily blame the folks on the active side for trying to get a piece of these guys because they're on those yards for a reason. They're on those yards and they program on those yards because they don't want to be around SNY people because they're not willing to be on an integrated yard. And, and CDC is allowing that to happen by saying, cool, here's an active yard. So you're putting those guys in a bad spot where based on the politics of their environment, they have to do something, right? But you're the one that's sending the enemy there. You know, this isn't like groups politicking against each other. This isn't in the hostility stuff. This, this isn't, oh, this individual did something on his yard. He ran up a dead or, or something else. This is just a victim put out there to be a victim and in order for them to be a victim, somebody has to be the attacker. And you're kind of setting the attackers up uh, as well. So I, I don't know, man. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I think it's a messed up situation. Uh, it's unfortunate that it takes somebody losing their life for the administration to look and say, oh, maybe we should rethink this. Um, and, and I think it's happening at other prisons. You know, I don't know for sure exactly the extent of where, but... But I don't think Salinas Valley is the only place that this is happening. And again, it's not an attempt to integrate the yard. It's really just putting lambs out to slaughter. You know, they're, they're not taking buses of guys. It's a handful of people. It's these two guys. It's these three guys. One from this group and a couple from that group. And, and it's just a messed up situation. And the individuals on those yards are not going to be integrated. You know, it's, you're not going to be able to integrate those yards without massive violence. And we've seen that happen, you know, throughout other prisons. And 
And that's what would try to happen there. And CDC knows that. They know that it's not going to work. So, anyways, let, you know, what do you guys think? Man, let me know in the comments. Uh, and, and yeah, dude, if reason number six million and five, right, to uh, if you're not in prison, make life choices that that don't really put you at risk of going to prison, you know, because once you're in there, anything can happen. CDC could do whatever they want with you and the population around you can do whatever they want with you. And no matter how tough you are, no matter how big and bad you are, no matter how sick and invalid you are, uh, anything can happen, you know? So help others move in excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Help your community because they need you and, and stay tuned for the next one, you guys. Take care.